Now, uh, the crenellated crown is then adopted by Shapur I, as you see underneath there, both on his, inscri on his coins and also on his uh, reliefs, the top uh, left relief showing Shapur at Nakhcherajja. And uh, it is then, and then later in the fourth century, it is also uh, adopted by Shapur II, who ruled from 309 to 307, 379. And from then onwards, becomes the crenellated crown becomes a main component of all uh, um, Sasanian crowns. Now, Bahram the first, or Varahram the first, who ruled from 273 to 276 a son of Shapur I, adopted another crown. He wore a radiant crown, a crown um, you see on the far right. And it has been suggested that this is the symbol of Mithra, uh, the god of season, sun, and contract. And um, uh, th that's why he wore uh, this crown. Now, it's interesting that um, I just want to go back if I can, yes. Um, the, the relief that you see at the top uh, shows the family of Ardashir and Shapur, his son, is the figure on the far, far right uh, wearing a bird crown, um, probably uh, while he was co-regent with his father and we have coins of Shapur, you see here, where the crown ends in a bird's head. But there are also other figures. Those two little ones in front of the um, king uh, and, and the divine being. And uh, Walter Hinz, the German uh, scholar uh, who died in the sort of 1980s, um, argued very convincingly that these two figures may have been uh, one on the left, Barahran the first as a child, and then in front of him a nude figure, maybe Verathragna, the victorious warrior god, is at Bahram. But it's interesting because when he was a child, he was closely associated with the patron deity Verathragna, whose name is the same. Bahram, Verathragna, they're one and the same. But when he grew up, he obviously adopted Mithra as his patron deity because he wears the crown of Mithra and the radiate uh, symbols. Um, now, um, Bahram of Varahram II, you see him in the bottom uh, row, introduced another crown. Bahram II was the son of Bahram I. He, for the first time, uh, wears a crown with wings. And um, this is probably a symbol of Verathragna or Izad Bahram, uh, the victorious warrior god, who, according to Bahram Yasht or Yasht 14, takes different, four, 14 different uh, forms, including a swift bird. And um, now, Varathragna was also one of the main companions of Mithra, and together they were responsible for looking after the uh, divine glory, the Far, which was bestowed upon kings. And um, I think I want to, I just, yes, that's it, Rahim, that's for you. <laughs> because, once again, the Kushan um, coins help us here. And this is a coin of Kanishka, of the second century from Bactria, which is modern Afghanistan. And uh, on the reverse, uh, the um, a figure is shown with a bird on top of his crown. And, not, and that in itself is fantastic, but he also has a, a name. And the, the name says Orlagno, which the Orlagno is the Bactrian equivalent to Verathragna. So we know that truly, um, you know, Verathragna is associated with a bird because we have him here. So it is, um, you know, quite clear that uh, the um, coins that show a bird or a wing probably are associated 
with uh, Vera Thragna and the um, Khvarna. Uh, now, uh, on coins of Bahram II, at least one of the figures on the reverse is the king himself. Now, when I say, and it's absolutely incredible, when you look at these coins, you don't even need a magnifying glass. This, the figure on the left, is on these very early coins, always the king himself, and he has these wings attached to the crown, exactly as you see him on the obverse, on the front. And um, the bird's crown in Sasanian iconography, as you see, is um, therefore clearly associated uh, with uh, victory and uh, the, uh, uh, the far. Now, there is also another question, and that is whether it is also associated the bird with other deities who, who have the task to look after the far, for example, uh, Anahita, uh, the goddess of fertility and all waters. And um, you see on the coin, the gold coin, on the right there is a, a triple bust. It's um, Bahram, a female figure with long uh, plaits, and then another figure uh, who ha wears a crown that ends in a bird and is offering a diadem, or holding a diadem. And um, the the question has often been, you know, is this a sort of the, the crown prince or who is it? I don't think it could, I mean, you know, it, I don't think it can be the crown prince because the king does not receive his uh, symbol of kingship from his son. It, it, that's, that's a bit difficult for me to understand it, but it can be a representation of a divine being, uh, very much so. And then, it's fascinating because on those coins where the little figure is presenting a, a diadem with ties on the front, if you look at the back, the figure on the right hand is also holding up a diadem. And again, it's a diadem. It has ties. Uh, and what is even more important is that that figure, who actually is quite voluptuous and looks like a female figure, uh, she has not, she doesn't have her hands covered because the argument in Sasanian iconography art is always that if the hand is covered, it can't be a divine being in the presence of God. But if the hand is not covered, I mean, th this is a tradition that goes back to the Achaemenids, that in the presence of uh, the king, you did not let your hands uh, see. I mean, it existed in the Rajar period as well, that, you know, in the at Salon, you always hid your hands. Uh, but here you can clearly see that the hand is not covered. You have to take my word. It's just amazing, amazing. So it could be, for example, if it's a female figure, it could be Anahita. But then the figure on the obverse, the little one, would also be Anahita. I don't know. There are, I mean, um, some people argue that it's a female figure because she has breasts on the obverse. She doesn't have breasts. Mm. That's, uh, that's a sort of illusion that you get. It's the folds of the fabric. Uh, but, you know, it's very, very interesting. Now, I draw your attention to the coin at the bottom. That is fascinating. It comes from a private collection uh, in, in London because the little figure has a combination of a hat that is a boar and wings. It's all, I haven't, have you seen anything? Have you ever seen that? This is, I think it's unique. Or if it's not unique, there are very, very few. Now, what is this? It's Verathragna, because the boar is another symbol of the victorious god Bahram. The, um, and here you have both the wings and the boar. So it's a fantastic coin. And the figure next to um, the king, the queen perhaps, his queen, also wears a boar's hat. But, you know, in cases when the king does not receive or share a diadem with other figures, then it could be his family. It could well be.
Now, um, the we now come to uh, Nasser. Uh, this is actually very interesting. I mean, the, the, he, he, of course, is um, uh, the person who gets rid of, uh, who had to wait for a long time for his nephew to uh, die. And when he Bahram the second died, he got rid of Bahram the third. So he put himself on the throne after having waited for many many years in the wings. And he, of course, we know him from the Paikuli inscription. We know him from the uh, relief of uh, Nachshir Rostam. Uh, on the very, very far right, when you come to look at all the reliefs, as you see him, and then also his coins. And here he is standing, sharing a diadem. Um, again, you know, the late Shapushab was he argued very convincingly that this cannot be Anahita because her hands are uh, covered. Uh, and it's a bit odd that a goddess would have the hands covered in the presence of the king. I, I think it is not... Anahita, but interestingly, there is a small figure in between them, probably um, the later Ormaz II, the son of Nazi. And when you look at coins of Ormaz II, we also have a relief, a jousting relief from Ormaz II. You see how he brings in a bird holding a pearl in its beak, again, a symbol of the Khvarna and the victorious sort of uh, as element. Um, so it's fascinating. And, and it is also uh, around this time that the kings put uh, their own bust into the fires on the reverse. So, um, you know, this is uh, very much an indication that we're looking at the fire of, say, Ormaz or, or uh, Shapur. Um, I just want to draw your attention to this bird crown that I mentioned here with Ormaz II. We have examples in, in the, in, on coins before that. I mentioned very briefly how, for example, Shapur I as a co-regent probably um, around 240 uh, wore the uh, uh, crown that ended in a bird protomy and uh, uh, pearl and uh, uh, bird crowns are also again well known from coins of Perseus, both Fars, both in the sort of second, third century of the Common Era, but also earlier in the third, uh, early second century um, uh, before the Common Era. So again, you see how traditions continue. They sort of really are modified slightly, but it's the same sort of co um, concept, probably, again, indicate you know, a symbol of kingship, the Fahvarna, and also uh, the Varagna bird, whose task is to look after um, the Fah. 